Hello, everyone. Yeah, uh, I'll be talking about tensor evolution. Uh, this work was done at uh, Qualcomm Research along with my colleague, uh, Mutu Baskaran. So I'm presenting a new way of uh, analyzing uh, tensors in graph compiler. And this is not a completely done work, so I'm looking for collaboration. That's one the reason to present it here and seek collaboration to get it into MLIR. So tensor evolution is an extension of what you already know, the LLVM scalar evolution. Scalar evolution was for scalars, and this extends it to tensors. And I guess everybody knows what tensors are, but just in case, tensors are multidimensional arrays, and they are quite fundamental to machine model implementation. So because we say tensor evolution extends scalar evolution, a little quick recap on what it is. And like anybody else uh, these days, I typed into the large language model and asked what it is, and this is what it said. So scalar evolution is an LLVM analysis that's used to analyze, categorize, et cetera, uh, loops in, 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 in uh, simplify expressions in loops. Many optimizations such as loop strength reduction, induction variables, uh, expression elimination, et cetera, rely on SCAV. And then it says, the large language model says, how a SCAV is also a complex topic. And I thought, like, that's wow. It has looked through all the codes and stuff in GitHub, whatever, and said, concluded that this is complicated. Yeah, I agree with it. Uh, it is a complex star, uh, analysis and optimization. Uh, but luckily, a few years ago, I had a tutorial here at this forum on SCAV. So I uh, have a look at that if you want to relate that one to what I present here, because what I present is built on top of SCAV analysis. And a side note, uh, in the summary I had written, how a SCAV is a complex topic. So in this case, the large language model really <laughs> just cut and paste. Well, anyways, so recap, what is SCAV? Uh, if you have a for loop, and in this case a simple one, ai equals to i times k, so you can see what it's doing is it's putting values 0, k, k plus k, 2k, etc., into the array a, right? So looking at the code, you can see that. The scav analysis figures that out and builds something called a basic recurrence, and that's the one you see on line 5. So... The line five in the green box says open braces zero comma plus k. I want to dwell a bit more on this because the rest of the presentation and explanation is really builds a, makes this more complex and builds on top of it. This is for a scalar. So all that SCAF basic expression is saying is you start with zero and for successive iteration, you add the offset k. So zero, k, two k, three k, four k. Okay, so before we get into the mathematics and stuff, this scalar evolution, we know it, it does some things for you. What does tensor evolution give you? So here is a very simple PyTorch code where you have this forward block and in there you have a for loop and in the for loop you have x equals a plus x. a and x are tensors. a, as you can see here, is a loop invariant tensor and x is getting overwritten. If you stare at the code for a few seconds, you can figure out, okay, you're returning the final value of x, and you run this loop 15 times. So basically, you're going to return 15 times a plus x, where x is the original value that came in, right? So the rest of the tensor evolution builds and makes much as a scav, right? You start from something basic, and you build a whole mathematical model around it. So, Let's get into the mathematics. So I'm not going to go very deep into this one, but OK. So what, what it builds on is you got a loop invariant tensor, Tc. It has a certain shape. And then you've got this function that generates for different iteration value new tensors of the same shape. And you've got this operator, which are element-wise, add or multiply, et cetera. And the function, the equation 1 and 2, you see, are generators. They generate you new tensors of the same shape. And much referring back to what you saw earlier, for the scalar evolution, 
scalars and you build recurrences on scalars. In this case, you build tensors and recurrences on tensors. This is basic. But you don't stop there because that doesn't give you much. And then you have what's called a chain of recurrences. Now, the whole point of this is there is a strong mathematical background on these things. There were papers written like 30 years ago on chains of recurrences. And they have a mathematical model. And it's reducible in the sense like if you've got a loop that runs a million times, you don't need to run it a million times to know what the value would be at any point. You can compute it. You can compute it using high school algebra kind of thing, rewrite rules. So like, you know, a plus b whole square is a square plus 2ab, et cetera. So in the same way, you have these rewrite rules that you can come and you can build the tensor evolution expressions on top of it, much like how SCEV does it. And SCEV calls it available expressions. We call it TEV available expressions. So I'll walk quickly through a few of them. So the basic one we already saw, you got an x initial on the left-hand side, if you say, of the slide. You got x coming in, there's an initial value, a, and every time that tensor x goes through the loop, a loop invariant k gets added. So the first time it's a plus k, then a plus 2k and stuff. So in the blue rectangle thing you see in there in the middle, that's your basic tensor evolution expression. Same thing from the right for, for the multiply. So once you build a basic tensor evolution expression, now if in your graph you've got an add operator that takes in a loop invariant and does something, now you can derive these rewrites. So next you have, so if you're adding a k to a basic tensor evolution expression, you have k plus a, et cetera. It gets more complicated as you start dwelling more. Okay, you've got two basic recurrences and you got this add operator, what is the net resulting value? And if you think it through, do some mathematics, you'll say, oh yeah, this is right. It doesn't stop there again. You got a basic tensor evolution expression and that feeds into a graph where you have a something else that's also like going round. And then if you think it through, there's, okay, this is a chain of recurrence and you can derive these things. Okay, it doesn't stop there still, because for scalar evolution, you didn't have something like slicing, reshape, operators that apply on tensors. How do they apply to tensors? So now again, like, you know, you can derive these things. If, so if you have a basic reference and you do a slicing, you get the slice distributes over, the reshape distributes over, transforms. Concat is a bit different. You actually concat the base and the offsets. So a bunch of rules and rewrite rules you can derive. And so you have these bags of tricks or rules, and you use these rules to simplify your equations. So you've got an initial graph that you've built. You've got nodes, operators, tensors in your ML graph. First, you start off with building the basic tensor evolution expression, and then use that and the rewrite rules to derive the rest. So here's a quick, quick example. You got a PyTorch code that's a bit more complicated than the ones we saw earlier. So it does uh, basic x equals x plus a, then there's a slice involved, and then there's an add, et cetera. So what I've shown here is it takes that, let me go back a bit, uh, it builds the basic tensor evolution expression, and then applies those rules that we saw to successively simplify the whole thing. It gets very complicated. The scale was is quite huge and complicated. So doing this is complicated stuff, but you can do it, right? And let's say in this code, right, for example, it wants to know what the return value y is. So once you have everything in place, you can actually compute the final value. You don't actually need to run the loop anymore. You can just delete the loop. And that's the whole point of it. So in conclusion, so I'm proposing a new uh, optimization analysis called tensor evolution. And I'm looking for collaboration so to get this into MLIR. And this is not done work, so it's like initial thing, and a uh, lot more things need to be done on top of it. So thank you. Okay.